Okay. Uh, all right. So on Monday and yesterday, we were working with position versus time graphs. Okay. And a position versus time graph, like the one on the left here, okay, tells us where an object is at various points in time. From that graph, we can infer or interpret several things. We can interpret what type of motion, or infer, what type of motion is occurring. Okay? In that particular position versus time graph here, what is that object doing? Yeah. Moving forward at a consistent velocity. Moving forward at a constant velocity. Okay? We know that because the amount its position changes is uniform. That is, it is the same over every equal time interval. Okay? If it was a curve, then it would be doing what? It would be accelerating. Okay? Because the amount of distance it covers would increase or decrease depending on the shape of the curve. Okay? So those are things we can kind of infer. We can calculate um, you know, the total distance traveled, the total displacement, Okay. And the last thing that we can calculate is the average, or sorry, the, um, the average velocity and average speed okay, are the other things that we can calculate uh, from that graph. Okay. From this graph, how would I calculate the average velocity of that object? And this will be important for your analysis on your lab. on the y-axis of this graph? Position. What's on the x-axis? Okay. So, obviously, x values are not velocity. Obviously, y values are not velocity, because y values are position and x values are time. Okay? So that means it's a combination of the two. And it's position over time, right? Because it's the units for velocity are meters over seconds or meters per second. Okay? The only way I can get that is with M. B is a Y value, so it's a position. Y is a position. Okay? So if I manipulate for M, I would have to subtract Y over here okay? and then divide both sides by X. Right? That would leave me with M. Everybody okay with that? All right. So if I plug in numbers from this graph into that equation, okay, look what happens. So I take, let's, I'm just going to use this as my y value up here. Okay, it's going to be 1,400 meters. Okay, and I'm going to use b. b is down here. This is my y-intercept, and it's 100. Okay, okay, and I'm going to divide that by the total time, which according to this graph is 5 seconds. Okay, so 1,400 minus 100 is 1,300 over 5, I believe, is 260. Now, this is in meters, and this is in seconds. When I divide meters by seconds, what do I get? Meters per second. Okay, so I just calculated the velocity of that object from the slope of that graph. Is that okay? I also kind of did total displacement over total time. Right? I, after all, I went final position, 1,400, minus initial position, 100, and divided by 5, the total time. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Right? So that's where that formula, V equals D over T, comes from. It's the slope of this line. All right, so that's our position versus time graph. That's the kind of stuff we can get from it. Okay? And we said earlier that this is a graph showing an object traveling at a constant velocity. The graph on the right is a velocity versus time graph. What is it showing? So velocity is on the y-axis on that graph. Time is on the x-axis. What's it showing? It's showing an object traveling at a constant velocity. Okay. Is it showing the same object as the graph on the left? It 
it is. I just calculated the velocity of the object in this graph to be 260 meters per second. Look where this line is. Here's 200, here's 250, here's 300. That looks like 260 meters per second to me. Okay? And it's saying that its velocity is steady or constant at 260 meters per second. All right? So we're back to that whole different points of view idea. Okay? This is the same object from two different points of view. Okay? From one point of view, it looks like nothing's happening. Okay? Because what's on that graph isn't changing. It doesn't mean nothing's happening. It means the velocity isn't changing, so it's constant. Okay? On the position versus time graph, you see something going at a constant velocity, but from the position perspective, where position is changing by 260 meters every second. Right? Everybody okay with that idea? All right. So looking at velocity versus time graphs then, there's a number of things I can read directly off of a velocity time graph. Velocity and time. It's not a trick. Whenever I ask that question, it's the two things that are on the graph. Okay? What can I read off this graph? The two things that are on the graph. Okay? Now, what can I infer or interpret from this graph? Well, the type of motion. If I see a horizontal line, that means that object is traveling at a constant velocity, because the velocity is not changing. Okay? What if what's that object doing? I mean, if I look at this line, it says that the object at time zero is moving at 100 meters per second. And after five seconds, is moving at 400 meters per second. Its, its velocity is increasing. I would call that an acceleration. Okay? That's the kind of thing I need to be able to interpret. I don't have to memorize that. I just have to look at the graph and go, okay, at time zero, it's doing this. At time, four, at time five seconds, it's doing this. What does that mean? Okay? I don't want to memorize everything from every graph. It's too hard. I'll get it all confused. Okay? What's better is to have the skill to interpret it instead. What if instead this line looked like Okay, decelerate. We, we try not to use the term decelerate in, in physics, but yeah, it's slowing down. Okay? It, it's acceleration, we would call it as negative. Okay? And that would be because the slope of that line is also negative, right? It's pointing downward, so the slope would be negative. Just a minute ago, when the slope was positive, okay, it was speeding up. Okay, everybody tell the difference there? Okay, so on this graph, the slope represented velocity. What do you suppose the slope of this line represents? When it has a slope, we said the object was? What's this object doing? It's accelerating, right? Okay. Would the slope of the line then tell me the rate it's accelerating at? Let's find out. That's how we calculate slope. Okay? On this graph, okay? Y is going to be 400 meters per second. B is going to be 100 meters per second. X is going to be 5 seconds. Okay, so that's going to be 60 meters per second. Per second, right? I got meters per second on the top, and I got seconds on the bottom. Is that telling me how quickly I change my velocity? By 60 meters per second per second. Okay? We don't usually write it or say it that way, we usually say it like this 60 meters per second squared. Okay? Doesn't mean the number squared, it's just the unit. Okay, that's meters per second per second. Okay, so does the slope on that graph 
represents something different than it did on the position tab. Because every graph is different. Okay, do I have to memorize that it's acceleration? I don't, I can figure it out. Okay, and you do that with any graph. Look at the slope, look at the units, and figure out what those units represent. Okay, everybody with me so far? Okay, I'm gonna take a couple things off of here right now. Including that diagonal line. According to this graph, the position time graph, how far, or what's the total displacement of that object? Okay, its final position is 1,000 more, but the graph is tricky because it starts at 100. So its total displacement is? 1,300. Right, 1,300 meters. Okay, because final position, 1,400, minus initial position, that's how we calculate displacement. So the total displacement is 1,300 meters. Can I figure out how far this, it goes on that graph? What, do I, what does this graph tell me? It tells me... It's moving at 260 meters per second, and it tells me it does that for five seconds. Can I calculate how far it goes? I got a formula for that. Right? I got that one. Okay? If I want to calculate D, I multiply both sides by T. Okay, 260 times 5. Now, if I look at this graph here, I took this number, 5, and I multiplied it by this number, 260. What shape does that make? You know, rectangle. Yeah. Okay. So, how do I calculate, what did I just calculate about this rectangle if I took the base and multiplied it by the height? You go base times height, you calculate? Area. Okay. Here's the trick with velocity time graphs. The area between the line and the x-axis is always displacement. Because you're always multiplying average velocity, the height, by the time, the base. It doesn't matter what the shape of the graph is, that's what you do. Okay? Are you alright with that? Okay. If it was a triangle, so if it looked like this instead. How do I calculate the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by two. Base times height divided by two. Okay, so I go five seconds times 400, okay, and then divide it by two, okay. Um, so five times 400 is uh, 8,000? No, 2,000, 2,000. If I divide that by two, okay, I'm going to get 1,000. Is that okay? Okay. So I got the area underneath here. That's going to be my total displacement. Okay. Now, if I alter this, let's say I put this line down to here instead. Okay. If I do that same calculation, is the area of that triangle going to be half the area of that rectangle? It is. Okay. Is it okay that that object only goes half as far as the other object? It is. Okay. This object, the first one, went 260 meters per second for five seconds. This one started at effectively, well, at 100, but we'll say, let's just say zero for simplicity, okay. and accelerated to 260. So it didn't go 260 for nearly as long as the first object did. Okay. So it wouldn't go nearly as far. Everybody okay with the geometry of that? Okay. So this is a graph of somebody running a race. Okay? And it's a velocity versus time graph. What are they doing in the first five seconds? They're accelerating. Okay? Their velocity goes from zero effectively 
to eight meters per second. This person is not terribly fast. Okay. Um, what did they do after that? Did they stop? Here at the top? Right. Okay, so here at the top, what's their velocity? Eight. Eight meters per second. So they accelerated and then they traveled at eight. eight meters per second. And then what do they do? They stop, right? Like they slow down and come to a stop. Okay, is that what happens? Like if this was a 100 meter race, is that exactly what you would do? Yeah. Okay, in a 100 meter race, you come out of the blocks. Okay? And you accelerate really, really hard. And then you get to a point where it doesn't matter how hard you try, you can't run any faster, even though you're putting all your effort into it. You reach your top speed. Okay? You run at your top speed okay? until you get to the finish line. And then you slow down and you come to a stop. Okay? Now, as I said, this person's not terribly fast. They only run at 8 meters per second. Okay? Usain Bolt ran at 17 meters per second at his top speed. The guy was a freak of nature. Okay. But his graph of his races actually looks very atypical for the guy who was the fastest man in the world. Okay. His graph is very atypical, and I'll show you why. Okay, so no, his graph would not be very typical. His graph would look kind of like this. It takes him almost 70 meters to reach his top speed, but his top speed is so much faster than everybody else's that it doesn't matter. Okay? A guy like Gatlin, he's reaching top speed after 45, 50. He's very powerful, but he doesn't have the top speed. Okay? So graphs look different depending on how you accelerate and how long you've been running your top speed for. This is the kind of thing that in sports they analyze all the time. Like if you're in, the, in <coughs> football, they can analyze your graph of the 40, okay? and they'll look at your graph. They'll look at how steep it is. That can, it's a measure of your, of your power and your strength. Okay? Um, in, in all kinds of track and field events, they look at your, at your graphs, okay? and they can analyze where your weaknesses are and find your strengths and, and help you to harness your race. So there's a lot of applications uh, to that kind of stuff. OK, so looking at this graph here, OK? And that, OK? What's this object doing? It's like holding the same velocity. Right. This is a graph of something going at a constant velocity of what? Five meters per second. Okay? We can tell that because we can read the number. It's five right off the graph. But we can also get it from the equation for the line. Okay? What's the slope of this line? Zero. zero. It's flat. Right? A horizontal line is a slope of zero. Okay? That means the object's not accelerating. Okay? And the y-intercept then, this would be b, is the speed at which you are running. Five. Okay? Everybody all right with that analysis? Okay. And we said just a minute ago, if I wanted to calculate how far this object goes, okay, I would calculate, essentially, the area under the line. Because if I did that, I would be taking the average velocity, which would be the height of the rectangle, and multiplying it by the time, which would be the base of that rectangle. Okay. So this object is going to run or go meters. Okay. Base times height, 10 times 5. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Okay. So that's the kind of analysis I might ask you to do. I throw a graph up there and I say, what's happening on this graph? Okay. You have to look at what type of graph it is, right? Because this is what happens sometimes on a test. I throw a velocity versus time graph on that looks like this, and people tell me the object's not moving. Okay. And they think that because on a position versus time graph, that's what an object not moving looks like. Okay? But that's memorization as opposed to, oh, this is a velocity time graph. The velocity is not changing. That's a constant velocity. Okay? That's different than not moving. All right. What if the line did this? That didn't give me a line. 
What's that object doing? That object's not moving. That object's not moving. Because it's traveling at a constant velocity of zero. That would be a tricky one. What's this object doing? Okay, we've got a velocity versus time graph again. Accelerating. It's accelerating. Okay, what's, according to the graph, what's the initial velocity of this object? object going at time zero. That would be its initial velocity. According to the equation, not zero. According to the points, possibly zero. Okay? But according to the equation, its initial velocity isn't zero. Zero point one eight two. Yeah. And in fact, it's negative. 0 0.182. If we look at this line, we can see that it actually goes slightly below 0. Okay? So this is another thing. Like I, if I give you a graph and ask you a question like that, you've got to understand what, what each part of the equation represents. Remember that B, the y-intercept, is always the value of y at 0. Okay? So in this case, it actually means that this object was moving very slightly backwards at time zero, and then accelerated from there okay, to uh, 30 meters per second or so forwards. Okay. All right, what's the acceleration of this object? So quick review, acceleration is the rate at which you change your velocity. Acceleration is occurring anytime velocity is changing. Okay, what part of that equation tells me how quickly y changes as a function of x? The slope, m. Okay, so what's the acceleration of this object? That's m. This object is accelerating at 2.96 meters per second squared. Every second, it goes 2.96 meters per second faster than the second before. Okay, And again, this isn't memorizing that acceleration is the slope. This is looking at this equation and saying, OK, on any graph, slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. And if I go meters per second divided by seconds, meters per second per second is acceleration. That means the slope is acceleration. Okay? It's about interpreting. Okay, I want you guys to do a calculation for me. Okay. I want you to calculate for me what the speed of this object, or sorry, velocity of this object would be after 15 seconds. velocity of this object after 15 seconds. I'm going to solve for the velocity after 15 seconds. What part of this equation am I solving for? The x. Which axis is velocity on? The vertical one, so y. Right? So I'd be solving for y. I'm given x. I'm given the 15 seconds. Time is on the x-axis. That's always how you tell. 
Okay, so if what they're asking for is something on the y, you're solving for y. If what you're uh, looking for is something from the x, solve for x. Okay, so in this case, I don't have to manipulate, I just have to plug in my numbers. Okay, so I'm going to have 2.96, my acceleration, times my time, 15 seconds. So this is how much I change my velocity by every second. I'm going to change it for 15 seconds, that's why I'm multiplying the two, and I'm going to add that to my initial velocity. Put my decimal in the wrong place. Okay, um, does that make sense? I would add my initial velocity to whatever the change in my velocity is going to be. All right, so when I punch all of that in, Okay, so that means that after 15 seconds, that object will be going 44.4 meters per second. Okay, and I would say that would be positive, okay, or forwards, okay, or something like that. Okay, all right, next one. How long to reach a velocity of positive 110 meters per second? Okay, the question asking how long something takes, what am I solving for? X. X in this case because X is time, okay? Because how long is always time, right? So that means I'm gonna have to manipulate Y equals MX plus B for X. So I'm gonna subtract B from both sides of y minus b equals m times x, and then I'll just divide both sides by m, okay? And I plug in my numbers. So the y value they gave me was 110 minus negative 0 0.182 divided by m, which is 2.96. Okay, so 110 minus negative 0.182. And I press equals before I do anything else here, right? Okay, and then I divide by 2.96. Because if I try and punch that all in in a line, I'll get a very different number. Okay, I'll just show you 110. Oh, I put 296 instead of 2.96. Okay. I get like 110 again, okay? If I did with I did this one right, okay, um, I get a much different answer. I get three point, or 37 seconds, I think, if I do that one right. Okay, everyone follow me there? Okay, you gotta make sure you punch it in, um, do the top first and then divide by the bottom. So if I go um, 110.182 divided by 2.96, okay, that's a very different answer than that. If you end up getting a number that's basically the same as the number you had on the top, you did something wrong. Okay. All right, questions on that graph? Okay, I'm gonna give you a five minute break before we look at a different one. Yes. All right, so also a velocity versus time graph. Is it still showing an object that is accelerating? It is. What's the initial velocity of this object according to the equation? According to the equation. According to the graph, I'd agree, probably close to three. Nope. Four point one four. Okay? Remember, this is the slope, this is n. Okay? And n is the rate at which I change my velocity. B is my velocity y value at time zero. Okay, that means it's my initial velocity. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at what's that object doing. Slowing down. That object slowing down. Okay. What's its initial velocity? 
27.5 meters per second, and I would say positive 27.5 meters per second, okay? And according to the graph, its final velocity is, where does the line end up? Does the line end up at zero? Okay, so do the points. The points wind up at zero as well, okay? That means the final velocity of this object is zero. It actually does slow down and stop, okay? All right, what's the acceleration of this object? Negative 3.02. Right, negative 3.02. Every second it goes 3.02 meters per second slower than the second before, okay? All right, I want you to calculate this one. According to this graph, at what time will the object's velocity be 7.5 meters per second? can't read that off the graph. There's a point at 7, but there isn't a point at 7.5. Okay, so I've got to calculate when is the object going positive 7.5 meters per second. Which axis is time on? X. X. So I'm solving for X when Y is positive 7.5. All right, so X is going to equal Y minus B over m, okay, so that's going to be positive 7.5 minus um, 27.5 divided by negative 3.02. The negative is crucial because I'm going to get a negative number on the top, okay? If I've got, if I don't do this right, my answer is going to say before this ever started, you were going that fast because it'll give me a negative time, okay, which means I went back in time, which we know that's not possible, okay? So uh, we're going to have um, negative 20 on the top uh, divided by negative 3.02. Okay, so that should take 6.6 .6 seconds. That's about right. I mean, here's, here's 7.5. It's around that time, somewhere in there, right? It's not quite at 7 seconds, 6.6. .6. That's pretty close to what the graph says. All right. Good. How fast is the object going at 5.3 seconds? Okay, and again, I don't mean for you to try and get this actually off the graph. I want you to calculate it. Okay. How fast is the object going at 5.3 seconds? So if we're looking for how fast, we're looking for y, because velocity is on the y-axis. Okay, So we don't have to do any manipulating. We just need to plug in here. So negative 3.02 times 5.3 seconds. That was the x value we were given, okay, plus 27.5. Okay, so negative 3.02 times 5.3 plus 27.5. All right, so we're looking at 11.5 meters per second at five seconds. Okay, that looks about right. There's five seconds right there. Everybody okay with that? Okay, now we're going to back up and do a couple things we haven't done here. Okay. So with this graph here, let's just say that the y-intercept is actually zero. Okay, so we'll say it's actually zero. How far does this object go over the course of the 10 second trip? This is tricky when we haven't done this yet. Okay, well actually we have. We looked at it on one of the graphs we did before. Okay? If I want to calculate how far something goes, I have to take average velocity and multiply it by what? 
by time. Okay, now this object is accelerating. That means its average velocity okay, is not constant. Okay? But it's somewhere between its initial velocity of zero and its final velocity of 29.6 meters per second. So on the graph that was a box, when we calculated the velocity, or the uh, displacement, sorry, displacement, sorry, um, we just went base times height. Agreed? Okay, well, that calculated the area under the line, right, or between the line and the x-axis. Can I calculate that here? What shape is this? It's a triangle. How do I calculate the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2. Okay, well, we, they told us it was after 10 seconds, so I know the base is 10 seconds, right? And I need to know the height. Okay? Well, I can calculate the height. I've got this equation to tell me what the height is. All right, I just have to plug in 10 seconds, and I'll know what the height of the triangle is at 10 seconds. It happens to be 29.6, because 2.96 times 10 okay, gives me that height. All right, so now, if I do that, if I go base times height over 2, okay, the height divided by 2 is right here. Well, if I start at a velocity of zero and go to this velocity, does it make sense that my average velocity would be halfway in between those two numbers? That's why this formula works. It's average velocity times time. We're just calculating what the average velocity is instead of being given it. And as long as the acceleration is uniform, like it is here, we can do that. We can just go base times height over 2. Height over 2 is the average velocity of the object. So in this case, right, we would have uh, the base times the height, 29.6, divided by 2. All right, so this object's going to go 148 meters. Is that terribly difficult? Okay. How does that change on this graph? This object doesn't start at what? It doesn't start at zero. So it's already moving at time zero. So there's not just a triangle here. There's a triangle and a, what's underneath the triangle? A rectangle, right? So here's what this is saying. Since the object started at 4.14 meters per second, I would have to calculate how far it would travel if it traveled at 4.14 meters per second for 10 seconds. And then I have to add on to that how far it travels while it's accelerating, okay? Because it had an initial velocity that would have carried it a certain number of meters. But then it also increased its velocity and traveled even further. Okay? That's why I have to add the two together. That's why we say it's the area between the line and the x-axis. It might be more than one shape. Right? On this graph, it happens to be two shapes. So how tall is this rectangle? 4.14. Okay? Because that's what my y-intercept is. And if I'm talking about the whole trip, its base is 10 seconds. All right, base times height gets me the area of a rectangle. So 41.4 meters. Now I've got to calculate the height of the triangle. Okay, but I don't want from the x-axis, I just want from 4.14. So if I want to calculate that height, I just don't add on. 4.14. If I take that slope and I multiply it by 10 seconds, that would tell me the height of the triangle, right? Because I only want the triangle, I don't want the area under it. All right, so 3.3 .3 times 10 is another, so that gives me a height of 33 meters per second. So now I can go 33 times 10 divided by 2. Okay, so that'll give me 16.5. Uh, Okay. Everybody all right with that? That doesn't seem right somehow. But then this 
ça. Oh, I didn't multiply. I didn't multiply by 10. Okay, so this is the height of the triangle. I gotta multiply it by 10 and then divide by 2. Oh, it seems small. Okay, uh, so 333. 30 okay, uh, divided by 2. All right, so this is 165. That makes more sense because the triangle is way bigger. Okay, so the total distance it would travel then would be those two numbers added together. So 206.4 meters. Okay, these are the kinds of things you're going to be asked to do with the velocity versus time. These kind of calculations. Now, it's basically just geometry, okay, or grade eight geometry. You know, we calculate the area of a triangle, area of a rectangle, okay, and do these y equals mx plus b calculations. Okay. Could it calculate how far this one goes? Same thing. It is right. Just the triangles the other way this time. Okay, so um, on this one here, it only goes for, um, only goes to here. Okay, so our base is going to be nine seconds on here. Okay, and our height is going to be 27 and a half. Okay, so 27 and a half times nine divided by two, and we'll have our distance travel. Got to calculate the area of that triangle. Everybody all right with that? Is it okay that that displacement is still positive, even though the object is slowing down? It is. Do you still move forwards while you're slowing down? Then you're okay. okay? The only time your displacement would be negative would be if the graph did this. And went down below the x-axis. Now you're moving backwards. Your displacement would have to be negative and thus backwards. Okay? And we'll deal with some graphs that do that. Okay, so little things here about velocity time graphs. Obviously, what we can read directly off the graph is the instantaneous velocity or the velocity at a certain time, okay? Um, and the area under the line, here between the line and the x-axis, okay, is equal to the displacement of the object. The acceleration is the slope, okay? Again, we don't need to memorize that. It's just something we can figure out each time. Okay, we did that position time graph, position time. Okay. So here's something else we have to talk about. This formula here. Okay. This is the formula that calculates acceleration. Okay. And it says that acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Okay. Which, incidentally, is the slope of a line on that graph. Agreed? Y would be final velocity, B would be initial velocity, X would be time. That's where that formula comes from. Okay? It's derived from that type of graph. So if I wanted to calculate the acceleration between 12 and 14 seconds on this graph, I would be starting here and ending here. Okay. So if I want to fill in the numbers into this formula, what's my VF? Okay. What's VF? Negative six. Negative six. Okay, minus VI. According to this graph, what's VI? Two. Positive two. Okay, how much time is there between 12 and 14 seconds? Negative six minus two, okay, is gonna be negative eight, okay? And negative eight divided by two is gonna be negative four meters per second squared, okay? Because this is meters per second, that's seconds, meters per second per second. Okay. All right. Um, 
tomorrow, we're going to be working on velocity versus time graphs like this, okay? Your um, displacement calculations on this are a little more involved because there's a lot of shapes there that you would have to calculate the areas of, okay? And you will have a quiz at the start of class tomorrow that I will post today after school. Right. Okay, you've got a few minutes here if you want to work on your lab, that might not be